Welcome. I'm Terry Tropin, and today I'll be discussing the ICD-10 CM and ICD-10 PCS coding for transplantations. First, let me start with some information about myself. I have a master's in healthcare administration informatics from the University of Maryland Global Campus and have RHIA and CCSP certifications. I'm also an AHEMA approved ICD-10 trainer. I taught health information technology at Montgomery College for over 20 years. I've also written books on coding and they are listed right here. I did evaluation and management coding made easy, ICD-10 CM coding made easy, and ICD-10 PCS coding guidelines made easy. Now these are all available on Amazon. The 2023 versions are available. If you're taking a class and still using the 2022 versions, those are also still available. So these are on Amazon and they're updated every year. So let's look at what I'm going to talk about today. Here is an overview. We're going to talk about ICD-10-CM coding. We're going to talk about diagnoses, and we're going to talk about complications. The diagnoses are fairly easy. The complications are more difficult. Now, transplants can involve bone, heart, heart, lung, intestines, kidney, liver, lung, pancreas, stem cells, skin, lots of different possibilities. We're also going to talk about ICD-10-CMZ codes for aftercare, after the surgery, status, awaiting a transplant, and donor. I'm also going to talk about ICD-10-PCS uh, coding for transplant procedures. Okay, so let's start with diagnoses. This is the easy part. The diagnosis matched to a transplant procedure is the reason the procedure is being done. For example, you would do a malignancy coding, malignancy code if that's what the reason for the procedure is, organ failure, congenital heart defect, chronic kidney disease, end-stage renal disease, severe cystic fibrosis, whatever the reason is that the procedure is being performed. Now, it becomes more complicated when coding complications of a transplant. The guidelines are divided into two, one set of guidelines for kidney transplant conversation, complications and a separate set for other transplant procedures. Let's start with diagnoses for other transplant procedures. So these are coded to chapter 19, injury, poisoning, and certain other consequences of external causes. And you code, use a code under category T86. These use for both complications, rejections, infections, whatever. So two codes are going to be required. First, a code from category T86, and then a second code that is more specific that identifies the complication. OK, so the guidelines state that you do not use a complication code if complication does not affect the function of the transplanted organ or another condition was pre-existing and doesn't affect the function of the transplanted organ. So it's not a complication unless it's affecting how the new organ, the transplanted organ is functioning. You do use a complication code, that T86, if the complication affects the transplanted organ. Now, this condition may be pre-existing and is now affecting the transplanted organ or may have developed after the procedure, after the transplant. If it's not coded as a complication, use a code Z94 to identify transplantation status. So a complication of a transplant procedure, as I said, is coded to T86 in Chapter 19. As shown here, each transplanted organ has its own code. Heart is T86.2, bone graft is T86.83 with additional digit, uh, liver is T86.4. So these are very specific codes. Under each of these codes in T86 are separate 
subcodes for the type of complication, rejection, failure, infection, and other. So rejection is T86, but then the specific organ, and then a fifth digit one. Failure is T86 with a fifth digit two. Infection is a T86 with a fifth digit three. And there's a note under this one, use additional code to specify infection. And then there's also um, other for fifth um, types of complications. Now these other complications, what is that? Well, it's problem, if there's a problem during the surgery, such as laceration of an organ, or if there's another problem other than rejection, failure, infection occurring after the surgery. So whatever there is, first you do the T86 and then use something more specific. So under T86, there is a note, an important note. Um, the note identifies additional codes. So again, this reminds you that the T86 is first and then the additional code. So it says use additional code to identify other transplant complications such as graft versus host disease, which is D86.81 with additional digit malignancy associated with organ transplant, and post-transplant lymphoproliferative disorders, PTLD. So these are listed second after the T86 code. So let's talk a little about each of the codes listed under T86 as use additional code. The first I'm going to talk about is graft-versus-host disease. In this the condition, the cells from the new organ, the transplanted organ, attack the patient's other tissues. A note under this code, again, reminds you to list the T86 first. So it says code first, underlying cause. So T86 is first and then graft versus host. And then there's another for use additional code to identify associated manifestations. And here's some examples, there may be other ones. Um, so you could end up reporting three or more codes. For example, T T86 for complication, D89.81 for graft, host, graft versus host disease, and for example, L65.9 for hair loss. If there's more than one of these manifestations, you may need more than three codes. Graft versus host disease may be documented as acute chronic acute on chronic or unspecified. Acute on chronic means the patient had a chronic form of this condition, but then has a flare up making it also acute. So that's acute on chronic. So you can see from the sixth digit, which of these it is. Um, so what is graft versus host disease? Immunocomp immunocompetent T lymphocytes in the graft attack the recipient tissue within 100 days and it causes tissue damage. Okay, so here's another complication. This is rejection. Over time, rejection may lead to failure, meaning complete loss of function. Um, transplant rejection, you can see here from the little picture, um, oligouria, this is for uh, kidney transplants. You can get oligouria, anuria, fever, lethargy, uh, other conditions. When it's chronic, you get um, uh, fatigue, and then the organ fails to function at all. Okay, so what is rejection and what is failure? So what's the difference? So in rejection, the patient cell attacks the transplant. In graft versus host, the cells of the transplanted organ attack the patient's cells. So you can see from, uh, they're, they're similar, but a little different on which tissue is doing the attacking the other tissues. Another complication is malignancy associated with organ transplant. Transplant patients are at increased risk of developing cancer because the medications given to them to suppress the immune system and prevent rejection can cause other conditions to um, become serious. So you can see kind of from this picture, uh, the immunosuppressive therapy, uh, other 
carcinogenic effects, um, mutated cells, increased incidence of viral infections, viral infections can uh, end up with um, a malignancy. So malignancy associated with organ transplantation is C80.2. So what are you gonna code? You're first gonna code that T86, then you're gonna code the C80.2, and then a specific code for the specific malignancy. So again, three codes. A final complication I'm gonna talk about is post-transplant um, lymphoproliferative disorders, PTLD. This occurs when a rapid increase in the number of B cell lymphocytes follows Epstein-Barr's virus infection in an organ transplant patient. And this, they get the infection, it's persist persistent, um, and then it can end up with um, uh, PTLD. And it may progress beyond that to non-Hodgkin lymphoma. So it's some pretty serious stuff. PTLD is coded as D47.Z1. Okay, so let's do a practice. If you wish, pause the video after I read it and work the answers out yourself before hearing my answer. So the can, practice is patient has a heart transplant, six, had a heart transplant six months ago. She is seen now with a cytal, cytomegalovirus infection due to the transplant. Let me pause for a second. Okay. So the answer is the T86.23, complication is always first, and then B25.9. So how do you get there? In the alphabetic index, find complication transplant heart infection. This refers you to T86.23. In the tabular list, find this code. A note under the code reminds you to use an additional code to specify the infection. In the alphabetic index, find cytomegalovirus infection or infection cytomegalovirus. Both refer you to B29.9. Now, if you look up transplant heart, it refers you to a Z code, a status code. That's when used when there's not a complication. So you don't want to use that one. And I'm going to talk more about status codes later. So here's another practice. If you want, again, you can pause the video if you wish. So practice two, lung transplant. Patient had lung transplant six months ago. She presents now with dehydration. The dehydration is not affecting the transplant. Okay, so the answer is E86.0 and then Z94.2. The dehydration is not a complication of the transplant. Now, sometimes it's not always this clear. Sometimes you have to go back to the physician and say, is this a complication? Is this not a complication? What's going on here? But in this case, we're going to make it clear that it's not affecting the transplant. So it's not a complication. So in the alphabetic index, find dehydration, which refers you to E86.0, and then find transplant lung, which refers you to Z94.2, which is status, meaning no complication. So let's do another one. So again, you can pause the video if you wish. Patient has graft versus host disease rejection following a bone marrow transplant. Okay, so uh, this is acute. It's T86.01, D89.810. So in the alphabetic index, find graft versus host disease acute, which refers you to D86.810. In the alphabetic index, find complication, transplant rejection, T86.01. And you see that notice, again, reminding you of the sequencing. You know, sequencing is so important in um, diagnosis coding. T86, use additional codes such as graft versus host disease, and it gives you the correct uh, code. Okay, so the previous slides discussed other transplants, meaning other than kidney transplants. 
There are some specific guidelines that apply only to kidney transplants. We cannot assume that a condition related to the kidney, such as chronic kidney disease, is in fact a complication of the kidney transplant. The guidelines say if the transplant may or may not completely cure the condition that was the reason for the transplant in the first place. This is because the transplant may not fully restore the function of the kidney. It may be better, but not cured, okay? Uh, if the documentation is unclear, query the provider. The patient may have um, chronic kidney disease, but is it a complication or is it just, they just have it? It's not a complication. So this needs to be um, clearly documented. And again, if you don't have the, um, uh, if it's not clear, you may need to ask the physician. Okay, so let's do another practice. Here is, let's see, patient had kidney transplant last year. He still has chronic kidney disease stage four. Now be careful, this is not documented as due to the transplant, a complication of the transplant. So we're going to code N18.2 and Z94.0. So we cannot assume that the CKD, we're going to say, we asked the physician, the physician said, no, it's not a complication. So this is how you know for sure. In the index, find history personal transplant. This refers to transplant. Find transplant kidney, which refers you to Z94.0. Find disease, kidney, chronic, stage two, which gives you that N18.2. So you're gonna do the N18.2 first and then the Z94.0. So the reason that they're there is not because they have a history of a transplant. The reason they're here being seen today is the um, kidney disease. Okay, here's another practice. Patient has a UTI, candidiasis, cystitis, and urethritis documented as, documented as a complication of the transplanted kidney. So after they got the transplant, they developed this infection and the transplant caused the infection. The infection is due to. Okay, so that means you do the T86, the complication code first, in this case, T86.13, and then the B37.41. So how do you get there? In the alphabetic index, find candidiasis, cystitis, or candidiasis, urethritis, both refer you to B37.41. If you look up infection, candidiasis, it refers you to candidiasis. Then you find complication, transplant kidney infection, which refers you to T86.13. Again, a note says use additional code. Remember, use additional code means the other code um, that this code is first and the other code for the, in this case, for the infection is listed second. Okay, so there are also Z codes for, af um, they're used with transplant codes. First are the transplant status codes, which we've talked about a little bit. So you have, these are very specific. You have kidney, Z94.0, liver, Z94.4, cornea, Z94.7, intestines, Z94.82. So these are very specific. And these are used when the patient is not being seen for a complication of the transplant. But the fact that they have a transplant will, of course, affect um, treatment because they have other issues. They probably are on a um, immunodepressive uh, medicine, so that will affect how whatever the current condition is being treated. Think of it as um, these are status codes. Oh, by the way, the patient had a transplant. It's not the focus of the visit, but it is important in um, selecting a uh, treatment plan for this patient. There are also Z, cares for, Z codes for aftercare following a transplant procedure. This is for treatment of the patient after the procedure, checking the wound, treatment, ongoing treatment, making sure that everything is going okay after. So they're still receiving treatment. 
These are also pretty specific. Aftercare following heart, Z48.21, following lung, Z48.24, following bone marrow transplant, Z48.290. So these are pretty specific. The patient is, is still being treated so for the after effects of the surgery or the wound resulting from the surgery. Okay, most, there are more of Z codes and these are available for follow-up care. This is used when the patient has completed treatment for the transplant procedure, kind of a checkup to make sure there's no reoccurrence of the condition, the transplant was done, um, the, the condition that the transplant was done for, or any other problems. So it's just kind of to see how's it going, although the specific treatment has been completed. Now note that this is not a very specific code. You have three digit codes, Z09, examination after completed treatments for conditions other than malignant neoplasmas. Only three digits. So what's the difference between aftercare and follow-up? This is often confusing. Aftercare codes, the Z48 codes, are used when initial treatment of a disease has been performed, so the surgery, and the patient requires continued care during the healing or recovery process or care for the long-term consequences of the disease. So they're still being treated for the condition. Follow-up care, on the other hand, means treatment's completed, and that's the Z09. Here's another Z code. This is a, a code for the patient is awaiting transplant status. Uh, they have a condition that requires a transplant, but they're waiting for a condition to be, for a kidney to be matched from someone else and available to be transplanted into them. As you know, this can sometimes take years, but the code is Z76.82. And again, this is not as specific as some of the other Z codes we've talked about. It doesn't specify which organ is involved. Now, how are you going to know which organ? Well, the other diagnoses of the condition that they have will indicate which organ has the problem. Okay, finally, there's Z codes for uh, indicating individual is being seen for testing as a possible donor organ donor. Now they have to match the tissues. They have to see how the patient is healthy. The donor is healthy enough to uh, contribute this. Again, these are fairly specific, going back to being very specific codes. These are Z52, skin donor Z52.1 with additional digits, bone marrow donors Z52.3, liver donors Z52.6, and other uh, organs or tissues, E52.89. So the, pay, the per person who's coming in for the visit is fine, but they're being tested to see if uh, they would be a suitable donor. So let's do another practice. Pause the video if you wish. This patient is hospitalized. The physician, physician notes that she has a, had a liver transplant a year ago. There are no documented problems with it at this time. Okay, so we're going to go to with Z94.4. In the alphabetic index, find status transplant. It refers you to transplant. So C transplant is like transplanted status and then liver, which refers you to Z94.4. If you look up status organ replacement liver, that refers you to Z97.8, but this is for presence of a device, not a transplant. So be careful, these are easily confused. Okay, now there are some possible external cause codes for complications of transplanted organs. I'm gonna just talk about these briefly. So an abnormal reaction code, Y83, is used when the patient reacts to the procedure. The code specifically state that these are used when there's no mention of misadventure, which is like the physician screwed up at the time of the procedure. A misadventure code is used when there's a complication of the procedure, somebody messed up. Failure of sterile precautions, wrong procedure performed, 
um, an adverse uh, incident is when a medical device breaks down during use, including problems with surgical instruments used or implants. So here's some examples. Uh, Y62.0, failure of sterile precautions during a surgical um, procedure. Y62.0, uh, Y83.0, surgical operation and transplant of whole organ is the cause of abnormal reaction or of later complication without mention of misadventure. So at the time of the procedure, they thought everything was fine, but later you use a Y83.0 because there is it, the patient's body reacts to um, the transplant. Y65.5, this is a scary one, performance of the wrong procedure. Ugh. Y71.3, surgical instrument materials and cardiovascular device for example, for a heart transplant, including seizures, sutures associated with adverse incidents. So these are possible external cause codes. Okay, so let's go on to PCS procedure coding. The root operation is transplant. So a transplant is defined as putting in or on all or a portion of a living body part taken from another individual or animals, so another person or from an animal, okay? To physically take the place and or function of all or a portion of a similar body part. So that seems pretty straightforward, however, there are some procedures commonly referred to as transplantations and may even be documented as transplants, but these are reported using root operation replacement, not transplant. So for example, um, cornea transplant use replacement, heart valve transplants use replacement, skin and subcutaneous tissue and fascia use replacement. Now these are in the guidelines. The guidelines specifically state bone marrow transplant is reported, is coded to the administration section, not the surgery section. So some of other non-transplants that are not coded as transplants are coded in the surgical and medical section using replacement. And bone marrow transplant is not in the surgical and medical section at all. It's coded in the administration section. So What's the difference between replacement and transplant? Both include putting in or on material. Replacement uses biological or synthetic material. Transplantation uses living body part from an individual or animal. The type of tissue uses different terms and different digits. You can see in replacement, it uses as device values, autologous tissue, synthetic substance, non-autologous tissue substitute, and zooplastic. Transplantation is for living body part from another individual or animal, and this is a qualifier value. That replacement is device value, transplantation is a qualifier value. And they use allergenic, syn syngenic, and zooplastic. So that's the difference between these two. It's kind of a fine line here. Okay, so where are you going to see um, transplantations in, in which body systems are you going to see the um, uh, root operation transplantation? Well, it's going to be in the heart and great vessels, lymphatic and hemic systems, respiratory system, gastrointestinal system, hepatobiliary system and pancreas, urinary system, female reproductive, male reproductive, anatomical regions general, anatomical regions upper extremities, and obstetrics. So these are the only ones that include transplantations. Okay, so let's do a practice. Um, a 20 year old patient with cystic fibrosis is admitted for a double lung transplant from a cadaver donor. So we're going to do this only as the uh, procedure code, not coding the cystic fibrosis. So we would use zero, B, Y, M, zero, Z, zero. The root operation for this procedure is transplantation. In the PCS index, find transplantation lung bilateral. Okay, it's a double lung transplant, which refers you to zero, B, Y, M, zero, Z. Now this is only 
six digits. You need that seventh digit. So refer to the table for the final digit, the qualifier. The seventh character for this procedure is zero, allergenic, since the organs came from a cadaver, from another person, okay? Allergenic is defined, again, as being taken from a different individuals of the same species. So let's do um, one final practice. Heart transplant using porcine heart. Okay, so the answer is 02YA0Z2. So this is a transplantation. Find transplantation heart, which again gives you only six digits, 02YA0Z. It's so easy to just say, oh, this must, you know, to not count the number of digits. So make sure you have seven digits. When you refer to the table, you see the final digit, the qualifier should be a two because this is zooplastic. The tissue is from a pig an animal. Okay, so you can't remember all the guidelines for these codes. This is really confusing. So it's very helpful to write things in your book so that you see them right away so you don't have to look around or think about it. Just like, oh, okay, and move on. So for trans and in your uh, alphabetic index and your CM book, go to the index and find transplant parentheses status right in complication CT86, so you don't get status mixed up with complication. For complication, transplant right in must affect function of the transplanted organ. And write in code also if needed, graph versus host, and then you can write in the code. So this will save you a lot of time. Complication kidney, write in. Do not assume it's a complication. Remember, if it's it, they may still have some uh, kidney disease, even though they had the transplant and it's not a complication, it's just they still have the dis some condition. For, for a status transplant circle by artificial or mechanical device or prosthesis, and then circle by organ transplant at the bottom of the indented terms. It's very easy to miss that by artificial or mechanical device or prosthesis note and pick one of those codes when what you want is organ transplant. And that's at the bottom of the indented terms. So you wanna make sure that you differentiate between those. Go to Z94 and circle excludes one complication. Um, then go to Z48 aftercare, write in healing or in recovery. Now this is true, not just for transportations, but um, many other conditions. Z09, follow up, right in, treatment completed. Again, this will help you with many different kinds of uh, conditions. Z83, abnormal reaction, underlined without misadventure. Y62 to Y69 in the external cause, uh, misadventures, right in, oops, or error, or whatever you want, differentiating. This is when something was not done correctly. Okay, in your PCS book, um, in the index under transplant, write in C replacement for cornea, heart valve, skin, subcutaneous tissue, fascia. So these are the ones that are done using replacement, not um, transplant. Okay, thank you so much for listening. Uh, that completes the video. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to contact me. If you'd like to purchase a copy of the slides for this video, give me a thanks of $5 or more and comment with your email so I know where to send the uh, slides. I will send you a PDF. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe by clicking on the picture in the lower right hand corner. So again, these are the books that I have written. Um, Evaluation and Management Coding, ICD-10 CM Coding, ICD-10 PCS Coding. Here is the link. So if you want to contact me with comments or questions, you can do it through Facebook, you can do it through email. My books are updated every year or so, and I do new videos as much as I can. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you.